Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Abdul Al Kamil, and I thought I'd give you a quick overview of the most important date functions in Excel. But before we do that, I'd like to show you um, a very important fact about dates in Excel. So all dates in Excel, as you can see here, are stored in Excel as numbers. Now, this is an important fact you need to keep in mind always. And this is why all the, the dates will auto align to the right if the date is correct because it is stored as a number. All right, so uh, to prove that, uh, you select the dates and you remove the format that is applied, which is date, and just uh, keep general format. And as you can see here, all the dates will show their true form. So um, they are basically serial numbers. Now, each number here basically represents the number of days since January 1st, 1900. Okay, and, that's, uh, and this is why every date you have is unique, has a unique number that is different from any other dates. All right, let's put them back uh, in the correct format. I put these kind of questions here to show the applications of the functions that we're going to discuss. And also the functions are listed at the top row there. Okay, so the um, if you need to isolate the day number, uh, if you want to extract the day number from a certain date, you use a function called day. It's going to ask for the serial number, which you now know what it means. It's basically the date. Okay. And... Um, applying it to this whole column uh, we move to the next one is basically what if you would like to know what's the day name so is it sunday monday you use a function called text and the text function what it does it takes a number and um, you know uh, display it as takes it in a certain number format that you uh, that you specify so uh, the value is the date and the text format that we're going to use for this number is going to be basically the day. If we write 3D, it's going to give us the short form for the day. If we give 4Ds, it's going to give us the um, full name of the day. Okay. So this is very important if you'd like to um, plot certain numbers um, on a chart and you would like to see, you know, um, kind of summarized, um, you know, um, sales value over, you know, uh, days of the week. Okay, the weekday function basically it was going to give you a number from 1 to 7, identifying the um, number of, of the day in question um, in the week that it, um, it is in. Uh, so, uh, the weekday function is going to ask for a serial number and you can also define the return type. And since it is in uh, square brackets, this means that it is optional. So basically, it's just going to ask you, you know, um, do you do you need to um, specify um, on what date the week starts? Okay, we're not going to do that here. So we're just going to use the default. So that's going to give us the, you know, for each of these days, you know, well, what's the day number? Uh, in the week. Uh, week number is basically going to give you the, uh, as the name says, it's going to give you the week number. It's going to ask for the serial number, which is the date, and also it's going to give you options to define, you know, how the week, um, on, on what day the week starts, and um, so that is optional. We don't need to do it here. And then we apply it to the rest of the days. Um, there's also the month number. So the month number, you use a function called month. It's just going to ask for a serial number. And now there is something uh, I think is going to be beneficial to all of you guys is when you read any function, it's going to give uh, get a description. Now the description most of the time is going to hint at few um, you know things. So uh, there are two things that you need to know for every function: the syntax and the return type okay the syntax is basically what the function requires in this case it requires serial number and then uh, you need to understand what's the return type of this function so is it going to return a text is it going to return a number is it going to return a logical value or is it going to be a date basically 
So uh, with the description here, we know that this is going to be a number from 1 to 12. So this is uh, what you'd like to keep in mind when you work with functions. So we give it the date. So we know that this is, uh, um, you know, it's going to give us the um, month number. But if you'd like to get the month name, because we would like to, to do some, um, you know, um, charting, uh, we can use this test function uh, as we did with the day name and we select the value and uh, on the format text uh, between quotation marks always because it is a text so uh, we put you know four m's to display the full name of the month or you can choose three m's to display the shorter version um, we apply it to the whole column there uh, and then now we come to the year. Now the year can be calculated into, uh, there is no text value for um, the year format, um, like the uh, year name, there's, um, there's always gonna be a number. But you have the option uh, to display it as a text or a number. If you use the function called year, you're gonna get the year as a number. If you use the function text, as we did with the month, you're gonna get the year. It's gonna, you're gonna see it as a number, but it's gonna be auto aligned to left, which indicates that it is actually a text. And it is a text because we're using the text function. But here we're gonna use the, um, the year function that is gonna give us um, the year as a number. Okay. So we apply to the whole column. And now we come to the end of month function. So um, if you would like to know what's the end date of any month, so you use the date and we're going to use this date here to figure that out. And that could have many applications. So end of month, it's going to ask for a starting date, which is uh, our date here. And then if you'd like to get the end of month for the, you know, for the month that this uh, date is in, basically you just write zero. But if you'd like to get the end of month date, uh, two months ahead or two months or three months, you know, in the past, you just basically write uh, a number that is above zero or less than zero. So greater than zero, like three, or if you want to go ahead in future, or uh, you put minus three or minus four, if you'd like to go back um, in the past, okay? So as you can see here, we're getting uh, our results. Now the end of month function is gonna return a date, uh, but it returned numbers here. And this is why you need to kind of remember that all dates are actually numbers and stored in Excel as numbers. So uh, for that, the calculation is correct. It is just, you know, not displayed correctly. So we're gonna change the format to short date. And as you can see here now, the, um, uh, the dates are correct. So it represents the end of month of each of these uh, dates that you see here. So uh, what if you need to know the expiry date of a certain contract or uh, uh, something like that? Use a function called edate. So the edate function is going to ask for a uh, start date and then it's going to say, okay, how many months, uh, you know, in the future or how many months back in time? So if it's back in time, you go with minus three or four, whatever I mean, uh, you'd like to go or use a positive number. So uh, in our case here, we'd like to know the date after three months for each of these dates. So we'd like to figure out, you know, the, um, the expiry date of the contract after three months, if the contract duration is three months. Uh, same, uh, we are expecting to see dates as results. And as you can see here, we get the numbers. So we are just in the wrong format. We can fix that easily by changing to short date. Um, next, we have the days function. The days function is going to basically just give you the number of days between two uh, days. So if you'd like to figure out the number of days since a certain day in the past, basically we use today. Today is going to give us, um, yeah, we're going to define today as the end date. So basically the today function is going to get us the uh, 
today's date and the starting date is going to be the date that we have there and as you can see here we get the number of days between uh, all of these dates here and uh, today and as you can see here now these are the numbers that we are expecting we're not expecting to see dates here so we don't need to change the format this is actually 3000 days since you know uh, February 14 um, 2012 all right so uh, now we come to a very important function as well uh, so uh, if you'd like to calculate the work days between two days okay so we're going to use today's date again so there is a function called network days and there is a function called network days international now the different the difference between the two is basically you know um, with the network days international you have the option to define your weekend okay so if you use the network days without the dot international that's going to be basically you know uh, what you have um, as a default in your system so we're going to use network days international and uh, so it's going to ask for the start date so we know this is our starting date and as an end date we're going to use today you know just for the sake of uh, of this example and then we have the option to define the weekend now we can change um let's say okay we're gonna say our weekend is gonna be sunday only so that's gonna select 11 and also if you have your holidays okay and as you can see here the weekend uh, is optional between square brackets and holidays also are optional so the function will calculate just using start date and end date okay but we define the weekend and we uh, can also define holidays so if you have holidays put them in one column and then when you come to the holidays here in the function basically select that column or refer to it uh, give it a name maybe in the name manager all right but we're, no, we're not going to do that here but this is you know a very good option and actually will calculate your work days correctly uh, using your weekend and also any holidays that are official in the country you live in cool so um, with the uh, options that we have selected we ended up with these number of days so comparing the network days with the days function you can see always that uh, network days are going to be less than the number of days between the same period and this is expected for sure because we're taking weekends out all right so we come to the last functions that we're going to discuss today it is basically what's going to be the, the the date of the work day after a certain number of days and that applies to and a good application for that is vacations right so uh, so if you have someone taking a vacation okay so you can use the workday function to figure out on what date they should return back to work so the start date is going to be this date and we're going to say okay he's going to take 11 days vacation and same goes for the weekend you need to select the weekend or don't put anything is going to use your default um, uh, for your system uh, so the weekend we're going to select the same one that we used which is um, Sunday okay so that's going to give us for each day's date here in this column it's going to give us what's going to be the next work day date let's say after 11 working days or 11 days vacations and then you know the vacation days basically is going to be the uh, it's going to be work days all right uh, okay so the uh, serial numbers here that you see uh, define the dates so we are expecting to get a date from this work day international function so basically we are in the wrong format changing that to short dates going to display the correct work day so basically this is going to be you know um the work day that they should return back uh, to work so i hope this um, video kind of give you an overview of the most important functions date functions in excel and uh, hope you got something out of it and uh, so 
yeah thank you so much guys for watching hope to see you in the next video goodbye